It was one of three mules that worked in the mine, Charlie the horse. <laughs> it turned out... <laughs> Maybe it's too dark. <laughs> well, good morning. Sometimes you get up early when you're camping. <laughs> Anyhow, let's get the day started. It's better than just laying here in the tent. I tried to get the GoPro going. It wouldn't work without the light. <laughs> Some days it's harder to get up out of the tent than others. <laughs> so this is what it's like about 4.30 in the morning. There, can you see me? <laughs> okay, let's get some coffee going. Okay, let's get on the road and off to Frank's slide. <laughs> everybody this is Craig here from Shimoto Travels and today we're gonna be going to a place called Frank Slide oh, there's a couple of deer to welcome me on the start of another good day off to Frank Slide it's a short ride it's probably only about a half an hour from where I stay and then I'll tell you what I know about Frank Slide and a couple of the stories that came out of it. As it wasn't as recent as the Hope Slide, but it was far more devastating than the Hope Slide was. Anyhow, we'll chat about it when we get there. Enjoy the scenery on the way. a mine there they were coal mining I think the coal mine started in the late 1890s and so the town was built up and all the people working in the coal mine well there it is on the right there's Frank slide so at four o'clock in the morning that mountain gave way and I'll have to put how many cubic meters of rock fell off that mountain there I know I had it on a couple of other videos, like the Hope Slide and the Cheam Slide, or Cheam Slide. This one was third compared to all those slides in volume, but it was the most devastating because it covered a village that lived at the bottom. Anyhow, I'll tell some stories once I, once I, this must be it right here.
So here we are at Frank Slide. It's right behind me here. And the debris field goes all the way over here. So I'll get my ugly mug out of the picture here. <laughs> so like I said, this rock slide happened in 1903. It was April 30th, roughly four in the morning. And right down there, there was a village there. Now what happened is in the 1890s, there was a coal mine that started within Turtle Mountain. So of course the village, that's where everyone lived, that was working at the mine. Now it was reported that the noise from when it broke away, it was an overhang. It was reported that it was so noisy, it was heard in Cochrane. And Cochrane from here, I think it's like 100 kilometers away. And they heard the noise of this from there. And what I always think is if you were sleeping, living in town here, and you heard that god awful sound, it was reported that it only took a hundred seconds to get from the top to land at the bottom of the hill. And they figured out 100 seconds from where the overhang was, the rocks were traveling 70 miles an hour. So if you were sitting at home and you woke up at four in the morning because of this god awful sound, I know all I would do is I'd sit there and try to think, well, what was that? And then a hundred seconds later, you're going to hear this increasing noise of rumbling. And this is how far the debris went. It just steamrolled over everything. That there's about a hundred people missing, known people missing. And there's somewhere between 70 and 90 deaths is what they figure. The other thing though, is what they don't know is at the bottom of the mountain there was like a little shanty town and it was people traveling here from all over trying to get work and they don't know how many people were in that shanty town they don't even know who was there so they don't have a clue how many people passed away or if anybody got out of there so there is a story of the miners that were working at that time when the rock slide happened now there was 20 miners that were working there. Three of them were outside, 17 inside, when the rock slide happened. And it was reported that the three outside passed away in the slide, but the 17 inside were still alive. The miners on the inside started digging on a coal seam to try and get to the surface. The atmosphere inside was getting pretty toxic and it was down to three people left that were still digging to try to get out. And they actually broke free and got to the surface. And I think the story was that all 17 of them survived and it took them 24 hours to get out. So one of the other stories that I remember reading, there was a train line and there was a train that came from Fort McLeod. So it was coming left to right and it was coming through this pass at the time. And then when they heard that noise, the engineer put the throttle at full speed and they got across a bridge that, where the creek is there and they made it to the other side before the rocks got to the bottom. And he was credited with saving everybody on that train by just reacting and trying to go as fast as he can past this area. And then one other funny story I kind of remember is they reopened the mine and they got access to the old shafts by May 30th, like it was a month later. And when they went in there, uh, one of the guys had discovered that Charlie the horse, <laughs> it was one of three mules that worked in the mine, Charlie the horse, <laughs> it turned out he lived, he survived a month inside that mountain. And what they found out is he was eating the bark off the wood that they used for the shafts in there and drinking from the pools of water that were running in there. The horse survived a month in the slide. Charlie the horse. <laughs> and then it turns out the mule died when the rescuers 
they overfed him with oats and brandy and then he passed away <laughs> anyhow you know it can't be all bad stories you got to have one funny one <laughs> but that's reported what happened I could probably talk about it a little bit longer but now nah, it gets a little bit boring it's time to get riding again the interpretive center I was kind of surprised by that it's actually closed right now I figured it would have been open okay time to get back on the road today I'm actually heading into Alberta to meet up with some family time to reunite with some people again okay let's get riding okay we're approaching the Trans Canada Highway just south of Cochrane Alberta so this is where I'm gonna end today's video so I'm gonna take a break for a little while but you guys won't notice a break at all because I'm backlogged on some of my videos so they'll still be coming out on the regular times the regular days but after I take a little bit of a break for about 10 days I'm gonna start right there at that gas station that'll be westbound on highway 1 going towards Banff Alberta okay thanks a lot you guys thanks for everyone who subscribed and follow along I hope you enjoy these videos and for those of you that just tripped onto the channel ah, subscribe and hit that like button <laughs> okay take care everybody ride safe wherever you travel to have a great time <laughs>